beer and skittles. For generations, the English countryman's idea of a pleasant evening's relaxation, and he could find them in his own local. There are other pastimes in many of today's pubs, but in some country inns, the ancient game of nine pins is still played of an evening. Skittles are older than English history. Nine pins and balls have been found in Egyptian tombs of 7,000 years ago, and how long the game has been going on in Europe, no one knows. One thing is certain, nine pins crossed the Atlantic many years ago, and soon a multitude of bowling establishments sprung up in New York's Manhattan area. Later, nine pins were banned in America because of the high stakes for which the pioneers gambled. So to avoid the veto, enthusiasts added another pin and renamed the game. Ten pins had come to stay and to become one of the national games of the United States. Today, there are more than 30 million American players of ten pin bowling. A game that's become very different from the earlier English version. But oddly enough, this is England. For the old game of nine pins, with its extra pin added, and changed in many ways out of all recognition, has recrossed the Atlantic and become established throughout Britain. In 23 of the United States Air Force camps in Britain, there are bowling lanes. Each airbase has bowling leagues, with between four and 16 teams in each, and some bases have as many as 10 leagues. Ten-pin bowling teams from the United States Air Force, stationed throughout the world, compete all through the year. And once a year, winning teams meet in America for the championship match, very much like a cup final. this Air Force base in Suffolk, as at others, wives of the servicemen enjoy the game too, and many of them are members of the league teams. Ten-pin bowling establishments in London have been followed by others throughout the country. As soon as the establishments opened over here, the crowds were there. All kinds of people came to see what this new game was all about. And bowlers say that once you roll your first ball, it's hard to stop. In America, bowling establishments for years were dark, drafty places with rough floors and even rougher boys setting up the pins after each throw. But Britain went straight from the old pub game to the modern, streamlined, air-conditioned establishment like this one. Instead of wooden benches, comfortable sprung seats are provided for spectators and, incidentally, there's no charge to come in and watch. Bowling doesn't call for any elaborate clothes or equipment, but you can't walk on the highly polished wooden lanes in street shoes. For sixpence, you can hire these special shoes, although keen players usually prefer to bring their own. Each game has to be booked. And if you have to wait your turn, you can always watch some of the other players. This is obviously a game for every member of the family. And all kinds of people find ten pins absorbing, judging from the expressions of some of the players and spectators. Starlet Sheila Gallagher is new to the game, and an instructor is very willing to help her. If her foot goes over the line, a bell will ring, and a red light will warn her to step back. The most important thing she needs to learn is what weight ball suits her and how to hold it. Balls weigh between 10 and 16 pounds, and a woman usually needs a lighter one than a man. Standard balls have three holes, two for fingers and one for the thumb. When thumb and fingers are in position, there should be room for a pencil between the palm of the hand and the ball. Sheila learns that the approach is the next important lesson. You have to take from three to five steps before the delivery, but most people use the four-step approach. And 
And here's where the, the magic mechanism comes in. When you bowl, the ball is automatically returned to you. At the point where you pick up the ball, there's a hot air blower to dry your hands if they get sticky. The ball looks heavy, but its own weight carries it along and the body must swing with it. Four left standing. The pin setter does its stuff, clears away the down pins and replaces the four exactly where they were, ready for the next shot. Scoring is cumulative and designed to stimulate interest in the game. Now let's take another look at the mechanism as the last pin is cleared away and the balls are returned. Behind the scenes, the pins are put back in their places. the middle pin drops into place, they're automatically set up ready for play. When you start a game, which comprises 10 frames, these dials are set to record automatically how many games you play and how much you'll have to pay afterwards. More automatic machines for cleaning and polishing the balls. The floor of each lane is made from maple and pine. It's 60 feet long and 42 inches wide. And this is how the experts do it. Florence Krumsky, an American professional player, is part of a husband and wife team. Here she makes a blind trick shot. Whitey Harris, another American professional, can also make a ball do exactly what he wants. Now Florence, team with husband Paul, does the duo crossover trick. All set up again and all done by the magic pin setter. But they're still doing it the old way in that little old country pub. There aren't many people who'll ever get this good at 10-pin bowling, but more and more are having a jolly good try.